video. Okay. Done. Done. You can say duration. So how long do we want to log? Maybe we want to log for a day or maybe we want to log for 30 days. You can see as the time, um, as we say the longer we want to go, the the more memory it shows. This is kind of like a memory gauge. It shows you how much memory we're taking up. No end, um, it'll overwrite eventually. I like that they kind of limited and didn't give you the whole memory because what ends up happening is if you get too big, if you get excited and go, no, I want as much memory as possible, your the tool can handle it, but your computer won't be able to handle it. But let's go back to 30 days, okay? So let's say we want to do a, or I, I click 30 minutes. I want to do a 30-day 30 day, 30 day study. Done. Now, um, so 30 days, and then time interval. Now, this is going to be your averaging interval. Now, you can see recommended for four weeks is five minutes. So the five minutes is what's recommended, which will actually make the memory uh, less or more depending on what you do. Like, see how much more memory I'm using as I have higher. But a lot of people think, again, bigger files are better, but that's not necessarily the case. Just because we're averaging once per second, we're gonna get the min, max, min, max, and average once per second, doesn't mean we're gonna get more or better data than if we did every five minutes. And the reason is, is because during those five minutes, we're still recording and logging everything. And at the end of the five minutes, we're recording min, max, and average. So you're not gonna miss anything for min and max anyways. And if there are multiple events that occur, if there's an event that occurs at minute one, minute three, and three and minute seven, or minute four, all of those events will be captured. So you're not gonna miss anything. So I go with whatever it's recommended. It says for a four week, two day study, five minutes is recommended. So that's what I'm gonna go with. And then harmonics, you can see that. Once you do all those things, it's gonna ask you to verify your connection and because all of our lights are green and it's happy, nothing seems to be upset, we can hit start log. We're gonna hit start log. It will then log for a period of time. I'm actually gonna let this, because it is a five minute interval, um, I'm gonna let it log for a little bit and then I'm gonna come back and I'm gonna show you how we're gonna get the data off of this. Um, once you're in logging mode, let's talk a little bit about what you can see. So power quality health, you can kind of click through all these at the bottom. So are these passing or failing? So you can see right here, we're talking about frequency. Then we do voltage variations. Oh wow, you don't have to click the little button. Anywhere up there will work. Voltage harmonics, unbalance, flicker, main signaling voltage, events for swells, dips, and interruptions rapid voltage change events, and then events for wave shape, deviation, and transients. And again, you can see detail. No, I don't think I have any, oh yeah. If you have any details on these, you can see that wave shape, so on and so forth. So very cool. Let's go back to overview, or is that where we were? Yeah, no? We're at power quality health. So the power quality health is just kind of a snapshot for everything. And again, if we did want to capture a snapshot of this screen, we can do screen capture. Boom, we just captured that screenshot and we can download that later. So that's a that's a really slick feature right there for making your reports and whatnot. Overview. Again, if you had three phase, you'd see all three here. We only have one, not a surprise. Um, live session, live versus session. Um, let's see. So, I'm guessing that's like the average over the session, although I haven't made it to five minutes, so it doesn't have any averaging yet. Um, table versus graph. Again. Okay, so you can see graphs um, or table, whatever you choose, and go back and forth between that. Volts, amps, hertz. There we go. Power. Dip swells, if we have these. 
harmonics. Well, let's go back to dip swells. I'm curious. Live session, okay, and graph. Interesting. Okay, that's for voltage, or you could do any of these other things. Okay, and transients, events. This is where you're going to see all your events. Be able to click through there your chart of events, flicker, unbalance. Click on flicker if you guys want to see that. And scope. And then last, again, you can choose voltage and current if you want. Oh, I don't have any load on it again, just a sec. I'll fix that current in a quick jiffy. There you go. And then phaser. Your phaser dragon. So you've got all these things. Kind of see what you're doing. Okay, I will let this record for a little bit. I will come back and we will download the data and show you how you can get it off on your USB stick. Okay, we're back after it's recorded for a while. And you can see we actually have some more bars in this PQ health screen. Um, if we went back to the home screen, this is where you would have been seeing that you were logging. And if we click here, we can see like I said, more things in the PQ health screen. You can kind of click some of these voltage harmonics are passing, flickers passing, so on and so forth. Um, what we're going to do is we're going to stop the logging and we are going to download it to our USB flash drive. Now, you can let it run for the full time that you told it you would run. So for me, you know, I said 30 days, so it wasn't going to get done until September sometime, about a month from now. But we're not going to, we're not worried about that. So what we're going to do is we're going to stop it early. So even if you've told it a week long, if you want to stop it after one day, you can just like this. You just hit stop and it's going to say stop active logging session. Confirm you want to stop because once you stop, we're not recording anymore. So we're going to stop that. Goes through that process. Now we're going to take this, we're going to plug it right into the top of the USB. Just like that. And the screen is going to tell us several options. We can copy all of our data. We can copy logging sessions. Or we can copy screenshots. So if we wanted to say, well, I think I want to do logging sessions, but maybe I don't want to do all of them. You can get in here and you can find which logging session. So let's say I only want to do the YouTube video one that I said. I can just, once it's clicked, right, clicked like that, I can just click this button down here. It says copy to USB. Again, if you are um, not wanting to use the touch screen, you can use the select button over here. Copy to USB, and it copies. Now, if you want to say, okay, I want to copy that, but I also want to copy screenshots, you can go over to screenshots. You can see which screenshots we got. And again, we got that screenshot earlier. This is the screenshot that um, didn't have much in that power quality health, and we saw more of it this time. So we can click that and say, copy all is there a way to select oh i thought there was a way to select maybe not so yeah copy all to usb copies all four files and now we're done at this point we can disconnect everything you could have disconnected it beforehand but now we just pull out the usb stick and bring this back to our pc download the data and we're off and run to the races i think i mentioned this before but Another thing that you can do with this USB stick is if you have a firmware update for this as they get released from Fluke, you can download the firmware into the flash drive and then just put it into the USB port and it will update the firmware. So again, never having to connect the unit itself to the PC if you choose not to. So hope that's useful as we get more communication devices and I know, learn more about those, both the Wi-Fi capability and potentially cellular capability in the future, I will uh, keep you posted on that. Take care.